So I never dreamed that this position would go this far for this long. Well, one of the day is Thursday, November 8th, 2024. This is the week and charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you're watching this somewhere non-live, I'll give you some information on how to join us live in just one second. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, they have a plethora of things to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks. We'll get to crypto first uh, after we get through the slides real quick. And so I want to continue with the methodology in action. I was just thinking a few minutes ago, it's kind of become exciting for me. I know you want to party with me, but exciting for me to go out and and make some trades and then bring them back to you and kind of show you what I did, good, bad, and different. And also 99% of everything was mentioned ahead of time. So that'll make more sense in just one second. I took a trade and, and then I realized that I was doing this con ongoing series and I was like, well, you know, this might actually be something good to cover here. And this is something I did announce ahead of time in the Facebook group. So I was trading opening gap reversals as a head start on position trade. And I have a question mark because I'm not sure that this is the best strategy in the world, but I think it's something, I think something's there, especially if you do it at a small size like I did. Anyway, it is a screen the screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up. All predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. That was Greg Morse. There's all my contact information. Again, the weekly webinars, or as I mentioned earlier, the weekly webinars are right here, davelander.com slash webinar. You can also pay attention to my YouTube channel, which is somewhere in here, uh, youtube.com slash Dave Landry, and you can catch me live there too. All right, let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action. So we have a reveal this week. Uh, remember, we skipped last week, or I skipped last week due to, due to Halloween. And the mystery chart reveal is ZK. And this is what it looked like last week or two weeks ago, last show. It had nice thrust from lows. Notice it had lots and lots of Landry light. Nice little deep pullback to that 30 EMA. So this is also known as a Landry light pullback. Entry was there, stop was there, and the IPT was here. So this is exactly as I showed it last week. And we were already long this particular stock. And it was actually still set up as a pullback, as you can see, a trip pivot pullback and also a Landry light pullback, as I just said. Anyway, so we'll take a look at what happened here with the original parameters. I first recommended it on the 14th. I don't know exactly which day it triggered. It might have taken a day. It took two days, I think, to trigger. Anyway, it gave us a smoking report, which is pretty exciting. For me, so here's the setup once again. It triggered and didn't do a whole lot. It came right back in. In fact, we had a loss on the first day in or second day in, and that could be a little demoralizing, but you just got to stick with it sometimes and see each position to its fruition. That's something I'm going to talk about in just one second. So, anyway, once you hit that initial profit target or the IPT, as I often call it, then you're taking off, remember, half of your shares and you're bringing that stop to break even. And that helps, obviously, but not guarantee, that the worst thing can happen to you is you break even that second loaf of the trade. And the best thing would be for this thing to take off forever. Unfortunately, this one hasn't done that just yet. So we'll take a look at what happened here. You can see it just kind of meandered back and forth for a while. And then I think I got whacked a couple of days ago. Uh, this slide might be a day or two old, but it did get whacked the day after the election. That's always a little demoralizing. You're like, oh, great. You know, my stocks are doing good. And then all of a sudden the market takes off and you don't take off with it. Well, it happens. And sometimes in, in, in this particular case, for instance, it took off before the market took off. So anyway, you do want to see each position to its fruition. I don't know why I can't say that tonight. All right. I want to follow up on the CLOV from a while back. Remember, this was a Landry Light pullback. Come back to this once we finish the segment on a million little things, and this will make more sense in one second. But you had a stock that trades fairly cleanly. Where I'm going with this is, it. this is a really good example in stock selection. And it began to accelerate higher, and you had lots and lots of Landry Light. The big blue arrow was also pointing higher. And you had a nice little Landry Light deep pullback to the 30 EMA. 
And you can see down here, the Landry light goes back to zero whenever you intersect that moving average. So entry was there, stop was there, and initial profit target was here. So again, that's the entry. And what's what was kind of cool is two days in, we're up 400, but about two weeks in, we're down $360. But it did take off. And when you hit that initial profit target, you bank half, remember. I know it's everybody here <laughs> knows all this, but believe me, there'll be some people that are watching uh, that don't. Anyway, so you bank a thousand. That was in this particular case, uh, it was, it'll always be a thousand dollars, two thousand, one thousand, two thousand is what you're risking. And when you hit the initial profit target, you'll be up two thousand. You take off a thousand at that point, and then you trail a stop higher. First to break even on the day that it hits intraday when it hits the IPT, and then you trail it loosely on the remainder. Now, this one was kind of shocking because in addition to that thousand dollars we already banked, we had on the remaining thousand shares we had seventeen ten in open profit. This is where I was going a second ago. Was this is on a hypothetical one hundred k account? Although I do take these trades in my model account and I do show where I bought two thousand of this one. And I forget which week it charts it was. I have to just dig that out or just grab the trades again to show you. But it did go in at 2000 and my entries were a little bit different. My exits were slightly different on the initial profit target, but they were close enough. I think I may have used a little discretion. But anyway, I found it interesting. I didn't realize it had drawn down that much, but it was up over 1700. And then when I put this in, it was down only up 790. And now it's only up 470 on the remainder. Now it would suck if it came back in and stopped us out. But making 1% overall on your accounts in one position over, let's say, eight or nine weeks, that's better than the poke in the eye is what I say. But hopefully, I know you said hope, but hopefully that won't happen. And I'll follow up on all these. Now, this was uh, crypto is not too exciting this week. I didn't really have any new trades that I mentioned in the group or mentioned publicly anywhere. And so I decided uh, not to just show you something that uh, I hadn't first mentioned. But this was in the last week of charts. This is the original slide. And with the crypto, I'm just using a 20% IPT. When you look at the service archives, davelearner.com slash archives, you'll notice that in some stocks, you might see the initial risk, which is the same as the initial profit target, by the way, at like 15%. In other ones, it might be as high as 33% or, or, or even higher in some cases if it's, it's super, if it's super volatile. In crypto, I just use 20%. It's an even round number. And also, when these things go, they seem to be able to pop 20% very easily. Obviously, I'm talking about the shit coins, SHYT, the altcoins. But anyway, this one's a bit of a bummer because this I did mention it in the last week's or two weeks ago webinar. and then. I was a little bummed out because I ended up bailing on it. Now, I don't, a uh, little confession time here. And that's one thing I've been thinking about lately. It's like, I want to I wanna show you the good. I also want to show you the bad too, just so you, you can wrap your head around trading from, from a more holistic standpoint. So in this particular case, this was, this was actually a loss and then it began to take off afterwards. Okay, well, it happens, right? So I wanted to make sure I showed you this to make make sure you realize it doesn't always work out. And in my confession here is that in crypto, I really don't take uh, good notes. I really shouldn't take, I really don't take, I don't know what's wrong with my, my tongue tonight. I really should spend more time documenting what I do, but it's such a small portion of what I do. I, I, I'm not taking it serious from that aspect. So I need to document it more. So where I'm going with that is I don't know exactly why I did what I did. I might have, because these are small accounts, I might have bailed on it because it wasn't doing anything and then switched into another pair that was moving at the time. But anyway, so I did allow myself to get out and obviously in hindsight and just, it really shouldn't, you know, maybe I should have tried to held a little bit deeper in here. Anyway, so stopped out of that. It was like a $30 loss, no big deal. All right, let me do a quick update on the TFM 10% system on the P's and on the Q's, P's and Q's. The zone lines I have in here, at the top of the line would be 100% of the 50 week closing high. And the bottom of this first zone would be 
five percent or more away from the 50 week closing high and then the bottom of the next zone would be 10 percent or more away from the 50 week closing high okay and my premise here is to avoid the occasional diaper change moment that occasionally happens in an index keith is saying why uh why so tight of a stop on what keith Sometimes, well, like I said, sometimes those stops might be 33%. When you look at those spreadsheets from the archives, I might be able to pull up the live one tonight in a few minutes. But when you look at those spreadsheets, you'll see that there's sometimes you're risking 33% because the stop has to be so far away. And sometimes you might be only risking 15% or even less. So it, it depends on where the stop is, is placed. Anyway, this was to help avoid diaper change moments. If a market's going to lose 50% of its value, it's going to lose 10% first. So my thinking is when it loses 10% of its value, get out the way. And then I put in a 50-week moving average as a whipsaw filter. So when those rules are both met, a close down in this hot pink zone, which means it's 10% or more away from this 50-week closing high, and a close below the 50-week moving average. And again, that's a whipsaw filter. Uh, in some cases, so notice here that the 50-week moving average is way down here. In this case, it closed below the 10% line or down more than 10% from the 50-week closing high, but the moving average was above it, okay? So that it didn't matter because the moving average was above it. But over here, if it dipped down into this 10% zone, it wouldn't be a sell until and unless it closed on a weekly basis, calendar weekly basis, below that 50 week moving average. Anyway, buys a little more stringent just to avoid getting in and out too much. You want to get out the way as soon as possible. And when you get back in, you want to be a little bit more cautious and try to avoid as much whipsaw as possible. Anyway, two bars of Landry lights and you buy on that close again in a Friday situation. The sell again would be below the moving average and below the 10% line. In this particular case, you can see that's a long ways away. Now, as I said, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, in fact, the zones were moving higher, which is kind of excited. That exciting. That means we're making obviously new 50 week, 50, yeah, 50 week closing highs. I think I went with 50 weeks because I was using a 50 week moving average just to keep the math right. But 52 weeks is probably fine if you wanted to uh, do a whole year with the with the look back. But anyway, again, the zones are rising again now that the market is making new highs. So you can see when it's not making new highs like back here, notice the zones went flat. And as it keeps making lower and lower, uh, keeps dropping further and further, these zones begin to drop with it eventually. Now, that's one thing that I did kind of built into the system was some lag. So it will take you a while to get back into a market. We have other ways of getting back into markets. And this was never intended to be a complete mechanical system, although I, I am following it with a small amount of money in the queues. And there they are there. That was the buy signal. And like I said in prior weeks, I never dreamed that this position would go this far for this long. And I checked it earlier today. I don't know where the queues, I forget where they close. I know they close at an all time high. But the queues were up with a 500 handle, and I got into this thing in the 300s. So it's 192.77 points, a 60% run. I, who's, uh, you know, what are the chances of getting into an index and run and catch it a 60% run? It's, it's, that doesn't happen that often. In an index like this, I'd be happy with a 10% a or a 15% or a 20% move would be pretty amazing. So I'm not bragging on the system. I'm just amazed that the market was able to do this. And, you know, the other thing it, it helps me to do as I'm kind of looking at this, because I've been pretty bearish here and there in between on, on, on the market since this thing triggered. But when you look at this longer term weekly chart, it does help you to put things in perspective, like the market looks pretty good when you're looking at this chart, but then it gets a lot scarier when you're looking at that, that daily chart, right? Anyway, longer term stuff, I, The just real quick, and I've just showed you this because I, my new thing is, let me show you the good and the bad, with, with a pure trend following system. Now, remember, as you just saw, we're using a hybrid approach, but a pure sim trend following system, and I know I'm beating the dead horse on this, but your drawdowns are abysmal and your accuracy sucks. <laughs> 
But you could see when I first got in this thing back here, I was feeling pretty darn good after a few weeks of uh, question, uh, scratching my head for doing that. But then it pulls back, and that's a $4,400 loss. Nearly all of the gains that were gained, okay, or, or whatever for the prior run, and it had the potential to go negative by the time it triggered a stop out. Anyway, there was another $3,600 drawdown here, and this one hurt a little bit, $8,000. And again, when I put this on, like I said, it was kind of like an S&G thing, only about 100 shares. And then it became, it turned into kind of real money. So I guess I'll keep following it with uh, with the cues. Anyway, should it stop out, and let's hope it goes a little bit further before it does, it would be a $6,200 drawdown. But I'm far enough ahead now to where it would suck, okay? Don't get me wrong. But I've almost kind of resolved myself to stick with this thing no matter what until and unless I'm stopped out. It'll eventually slap out, but it, it'll be fun to see how far it goes. I know you'll party with me. Anyway, hope, hopefully I didn't spend too much time on all that. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to follow up. People that are new to the show are like, hey, <laughs> this guy talks fast over a bunch of stuff, and other people eyes are glazing over. Anyway, uh, this is the Landry, this is Landry 100. It's something that I... Started again a few months ago, I think uh, beginning of June. And the whole system is you're just looking for 52-week highs, okay, on a closing basis through a tradable universe. And I think a tradable universe is probably, I would say, at least 200,000 shares on average, maybe a little bit more. And right now, I'm looking at 52-week closing highs. And I think that if the market got a little iffy, God forbid, I might look at shorter term closing highs to find things for it. But I seem to be able to find plenty enough stocks at these 52-week closing highs, especially now. Now, last week, I was beginning to wonder. But the thing about this list is, now, I don't actually trade this. This is just a shits and giggles kind of thing. This is, I know, you want to party with me, but this is kind of something fun to do. So I can see where the leadership is in the market. And a while back, it's like, I hated to do it, but I was forced to put REITs in this thing and utilities. And it's like, what the heck is going on, you know? But that's the areas that were fastly becoming momentum. And that's the great thing about this. It helps me to see these things as they occur. But anyway, I thought it was kind of cool. This one today was up 43%, almost 44%. And 148% says I started tracking. So I know I've showed something similar in the past. I just want to show you that this was actually bought right at right there at these 52-week highs. And again, that's technical analysis at its finest. If if a market's going to go from A to B and B is somewhere in between, sometimes you could just buy a B. Now, let me back that back a little bit, roll that back a little bit. Unless, of course, IPOs will be fine for the buy B pattern. As a general statement, though, if you are going to buy into new highs in a market, because breakout trading can be, uh, your results can be very, very low in accuracy. But if you're buying these breakouts and these new highs, because you never know, of course, where you're going to buy a new high right into a correction, as a lot of these do, and I've shown in previous webinars, but anyway, if you buy enough of them, you're going to catch the 43% and 44% moves occasionally and end up with a triple digit gain in some of these things. And the idea is to see how long we could ride these out, see how big these gains can become. And it's 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 fun it's because there's not a whole lot of stress in doing it and it's not a tremendous amount of work. But anyway, I've been working on this obviously for a few months and it, it tells you a lot. Now, I'll, I'll uh, if you guys want it in the Facebook group, I'll um, I'll shoot you a list of the stocks over there. So anyway, this was 148 percent gain, and then if you look over here, 107, 90 percent, and they go down from there. Now there's some stinkers in here. Don't get me wrong. In fact, let's take a look at that too. Now, one thing about momentum is momentum is fantastic. But it does end badly. And at one time, uh, my kunash just slipped out of the badly. Uh, <laughs> uh, one time, uh, who was it? Uh, Mike Moody, I think, was giving a speech and um, on momentum and all. And I asked him, 
uh, I said, uh, it always, momentum ends badly. If you, uh, if you figure out a way to solve for that, I'll, you'd never see my fat ass again. And uh, it was really cool. He's like, Dave, if you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a lot of baby poop. Baby's really cool, but they come with a lot of baby poop. Anyway, his point was that you have to take the good with the bad. And, and that's kind of the thing I want to kind of focus on more and more is the good and the bad. Because everybody wants to hear about the good. Nobody wants to hear about the bad. But that could keep you in an endless cycle of holy grail hunting. All right, anyway, so this is some ugliness that I noticed today. And this one obviously came out today. But you could see that it got waxed 20-something percent today. And what's interesting is it was actually must have been up quite a bit because it was only a 12.67% hit by taking it out near the close or on the close. But you can see there's some other spankings in here. This one's still up 34%. I don't know if it came out or not, but down 23% today. It likely came out with that spill. But so it's not always um, fantastic and, and it happens, believe me. Okay, Harry wants to list the Facebook. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in there tomorrow. All right, let's talk about trading open and gap reversals and also with the idea of possibly a head start on a position trade. So this was OKLO, and I forgot to grab the Facebook post, but I did post it to Facebook before I took the trade. So just an FYI, that was posted at Dave Landry's Trend Traders, which, by the way, is free, but you do have to be a member, at least a gold member of DaveLandry.com to participate. Anyway, so that was the, the buy on that opening gap reversal. And let me show you what I did. It, it came back nicely during the morning. It had a bit of a sell-off, and it came back nicely. And so I went ahead and anticipated that it was going to push into that gap. And I'm, I may have gotten in a little bit early on this one, but it looked like I was in pretty good shape. But unfortunately, I got stopped out fairly quickly, about an uh, hour and a half later or so. Now, what happened was I had a trailing stop in, I think like a one-point trailing stop, was, which was too tight, and it spiked up, and then it stopped me out. Now, what I probably should have done, and especially now I'm looking at this, is I probably should have put, in a case like this, Couple, just a couple hundred shares. It was kind of like an S&G type of trade, but but still a couple hundred shares is plenty. But what I should have done was I should have had an initial profit target up there, so it would get hit. I'm not sure whether would have, if it would have gotten hit anyway, but I did get stopped out for a, a small loss on this. Now what I did do, and I did this across more than one account. But I did buy late in the day when I saw it breaking out. Now, this is not exactly how you trade an opening gap reversal. Usually, it's earlier in the morning, and it maybe makes a, a range, and then it takes out that range to the upside. This was a late day entry. Sometimes those could actually be the best ones. It's like the, they mess around during the morning, and then in the afternoon, all of a sudden, they take off late in the day. So that's one thing that I probably need to watch more for is when I'm looking at these opening gap reversals, make sure. I put some alerts in and keep the alerts in just in case there's a late day trigger. But in this case, last half hour of the day, it looked like it was breaking out. So instead of waiting for it to make new highs in the day, I went ahead and bought in around 2050, 2059 or so. And by the close, I was actually up a little bit, maybe a hundred bucks if that much, but it wasn't, it was better than a poking the eye type of thing. And it also erased the morning day trade on this. Okay. So it was not only erased the morning loss, but it also had a small profit. And in this particular account, it was a small uh, share size and all. I said, well, you know what? I like that OKLO and I did, I do, and I gotta be careful, I don't get goaded, but I have a client who knows a, 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 an older gentleman, older than he is, who is always in like the, the what was that one a while back? Well, let's just say the NVIDIAs and, and, and stocks like that. And he buys and holds these things. Now, I don't recommend you buy and hold, but I'd like to look at this chart and the fact that he was telling me about his friend who was in OKLO forever or whatever just got me thinking about it. Okay, well, it does look pretty good from a technical standpoint, and it has the buzz of, I think it's like um, it did one of those, it's got some of the buzz going on with something. I might be getting confused with another one. 
but I think this is like one of those utilities with the nuclear potential or whatever, micronuclear type of thing, like NNE. And remember what happened with that one, it was fantastic. But anyway, it wasn't a huge share size. And I'm like, you know what? I, I don't mind owning a couple hundred shares of this. And I, and I think I'm kind of answering my question. I think if you if you want to actually own the stock, then by all means, you could use an opening gap reversal to get in. On the flip side, if you are doing a pure day trade on something, and whether you're losing or winning, do not carry it overnight because that math is not going to work out longer term. If you're doing an intraday trade, a market can only go so far intraday. But believe me, it can go a long ways overnight. I had a like a 90% loser I showed a few weeks ago, again, along the theme of showing you the, everything warts and all. But anyway, that's that's the close of the day right there. So this is where I got in, and I did keep those 200 shares, and so far, so good. Now, technically, I should have probably flipped them out because it was, was like uh, five points earlier today or whatever. I probably should have flipped out half of them, but I didn't actually go in with a plan other than I did want to own this one particular stock. And I'm not preaching buy and hold. I'm just showing you that this thing was somewhat set up on a daily, and then it made the opening gap reversal on top. Lately, I've been doing a series called A Million Little Things in No Particular Order. Number 604,660, read or reread viewpoints of a commodity trader. And the reason I put reread in there is I'd recommend, I'd recommend that you read this at least once a year. And it's a little book. In fact, I got it right here. It's a little book. If you go to davelearner.com slash books, slash books dash choose dash read, which I'll talk about in one second, and you can get a link to it. But it's a it's a neat little book, and there it is right there. So if you go to that books dash two dash read page, this is what I, this is what I wrote to, way back in the '80s. I decided to I would I decided to get serious about my trading. My goal was to read every book from the two major bookstores. There was no Amazon back then. I think it was Traders Press and Traders Library. In fact, I know that's the two it was. This one came from Traders Press. I ended up with a lot of stinkers in my library, which I gave away. <laughs> I had a raffle, and uh, you guys got got the uh, got some of those. Some of them are okay, I guess, but some of them were not. But I also made a bunch of great discoveries, and Viewpoints was definitely one of them. And I recently read reread this while working on my Master Trading Psychology course which I don't know if I ever finished that. I have quoted many uh, gems found within. So far, I've included Longstreet quotes in eight of my course presentations. Here's just one random one. How many times has each of us, having set out on a course, thought it necessary to continue because we have begun? Think about that the next time you fail to honor your stock. You feel like you're in this stock, you're stuck in this stock, you can't get out of this stock, but you can't give up now because you've, wasted all this time and energy on it. It is important that you don't, it's important that you not fool yourself. Don't even try. You just might do it. It is not easy to make money, particularly a lot of money in commodity trading, but you could do it if you pay the price. The price simply stated is enlightened self-discipline. You must have a program, you must know your program, and you must follow your program. Now, I just wanted to, I wanted to quote from this, and I realized if I started quoting, I wouldn't stop. But all I did there was, I think that's like on the first or second page or a few pages in, maybe page 11, uh, after all the, in, all the fluff in the front. So almost the second or third page in. So it's really good book. I would recommend you read it and reread it. All right, number 283,186. It should be on the next trade. On the next trade and only the next trade, execute flawlessly. Okay. All right, let's talk about what I mean by execute flawlessly. Now, I'm not saying you won't have a loss on this potential trade, but what I am going to say is, is that you need to follow the process and execute as flawlessly as possible in following the process. And it's just one trade, okay? Just one trade. Now, after I wrote a bunch of thoughts on this, I was like, well, wait a minute. There's also a little psychology involved too, right? So you need to make sure that you're of sound body and mind. And how did you sleep last night? 
okay? It could be something as simple as that. As I've said before, there's a lot of potential extraneous influences. My wife had sprained an ankle a while back and she wasn't able to exercise like he, she used to and she was getting crotchety and I was getting crotchety. So it doesn't have to necessarily be an injury or illness to you. It could be to someone else. So you need to identify those and, and make sure you can live with them and make sure they're not influencing you. Now, a lot of this will come out if you document your life through your morning pages. And I won't go into a lot of details. I know some of you guys' eyes are gla glazing over, but you need to do them. And you just wake up every morning. I have the little um, remarkable digital notebook that I absolutely love. And you write three handwritten pages. And it could be about anything. And don't try to write War and Peace. Just keep the pen down as much as you can and write about a bunch of stuff. I write about trading. I write about hobbies. I write about how I slept. You know, I know you want a part of me. Now, once you've realized that, hey, you're okay or whatever, or you can deal with whatever you're dealing with, make sure you pick the best setup or at the last minute I added to this or wait if it's not there. My trading service, I think it's been a couple of weeks since I've found anything that I think is worth trading, okay? So before I put capital into harm's way, I want to make darn sure I have a great chance of getting that capital back and then some, right? Now, it should be, when you're picking the best setup, it should be an obvious trend or trend transition. Ideally, you want to be able to draw your big blue arrow, okay? And then that trend should also be persisting and accelerating, and the stock should trade cleanly and not look like electrocardiogram. Also, there's no overhead resistance or overhead supply. That's a stickler for me. It's like when I see a trade that looks pretty good, but there's a mountain of overhead supply, it's like I don't want to trade so it could go up to that resistance and hit the resistance and I make a little money on that. I want clear air, so to speak. So this thing could possibly take off and not come back. And again, trades cleanly. Now, the setup, I was thinking about how to word this, but the setup not only fits the rules, and I see people out there that'll show setups of mine that don't even fit the rules. And on the flip side, I'll see them show, I'll see them show setups of mine and they fit the rules, but it, it, I would never take the setup in a million years for something like the aforementioned overhead supply. But in addition to fitting the rules, what I was thinking is make sure it's also like textbook in nature. Like an example you would see in one of my books, or if you were writing a book on trading, you would put this in your book as a perfect example. Not knowing the outcome, obviously, but just looks like a textbook example. And of course, plan to trade, and trade to plan, right? Where's your entry? Where's your stop? Where's your initial profit target? And have a plan in place, a general plan in place for your trailing stop. Now, there's not enough time to get into details of all this stuff. A couple thoughts. A fairly liberal entry will help keep you out of trouble should the stock just kind of bounce around a little bit on noise alone. A, a deep, nice stop, a wider stop. If you're struggling with trading, then a wider stop, provided you picked a really good Look and set up a wider stop is going to help ensure that you're going to catch a trend. Okay. And then you want to adjust your share size down accordingly. Now make sure you have a little bit of forethought on minor discretion if if you're disciplined enough to use a little discretion. So you want to have a little forethought. And what I mean by that is like it's like, okay, Dave. I'm getting this trade, but if it takes off really fast over a day or two and it gets fairly close at an IPT, I'm going to go ahead and just take the IPT at that point, the initial profit target. I'll go ahead and take off half a share. So things like that. Um, God forbid, should it gap against me, I'm going to implement a damage control plan. Again, these things are things that require a little bit more discipline, a little more experience, but over time, they'll make more and more sense. And of course, trade the plan, okay? Uh, as I said in prior broadcasts, let a stop trigger you in. I almost always use stops to trigger me in for my position trades, especially those for the trading service. That way, if I go to lunch or the bathroom or whatever, then I get triggered into a position and I don't have to sit there and watch a screen. I can go for a walk or go to the gym or whatever. 
and then let it stop or the initial profit target take you out from the position. Now, I thought about this earlier. You want to document, but you don't just want to document. You also want to document your feelings, and then you want to document and document and document. And I think one way to think about it would be document with so much detail as if you had to define, defend yourself at a court of law. So pretend you had to defend all your actions, okay, and make sure you have plenty of documentation to go with it. Just like the crypt, like I said earlier, it's like I don't remember what I was thinking on that crypto trade. Well, because I didn't document it. Now, if you want to go in and, and um, you know, look at some of these other trades or whatever, or if I went, it, I, I didn't do it, but I probably should have gone back and looked at the, um, the ogre trade. I should have looked at what I've documented there, but I'm pretty sure everything I just told you was my thinking on that. What does a trader do when he nears the point of loss of self-confidence? He must resort to the most powerful force in the world, positive thinking. Okay, that'll only get you so far. <laughs> it's like, a, who's it, Zig Ziglar? Talks about a little boy flunked the bad, math test. Dad, I think I flunked the math test. And dad's like, son, you got to be positive. He says, dad, I'm positive I flunked that math test. But anyway... He must believe he can. Remembering past successes helps. It is important that he prove that he can by selecting just one trade he can operate without error. This does not mean a trade without a risk. It only means he can operate it without making a mistake. So that's where, as you probably can see, if you put the two and two together, this is where I, I decided to make on the next trade, one of those million little things. I know I've talked about that before, but this jogged my memory, and that's why that became one of the little million little things. Now, just another one in here real quick, number 594,581. Now just do that on the next 10,000 trades. Where's my mic? Do I have a mic? I need to get an old mic to drop. I used to be able to... <laughs> have... I messed up some mics by dropping the mic, but that's a mic drop right there. Do that on the next 10,000 trades. So what I did was we're resistant to, to big change, okay? So there's a little bit more psychology other than being a little goofy on that than, than might meet the eye. If you have to deal with an, how you're going to trade the next 10,000 trades, that's overwhelming, okay? But if you only have to perform flawlessly on one, then it's it's easier from a psychological standpoint, okay? And then you do another one, and then you get those reps in, as we we're often talking about. Okay, I'm going to hop over to crypto. And if there's any crypto pairs you guys want me to take a look at, uh, who was it? Keith was asking about a tight stop. Keith, you remember what the question was or what stock it was? I think I could pull the service. This is the service for tonight. So you can see that this one initially had a 33% stop, and then this one had a 21% stop. Okay. Notice the share size. This, okay, so this is a five-point stop, STOP. And based on that share size on 100 k account, risking 2%, that's two thousand dollars Okay. And then you can put a bigger account in if you have a bigger account or a small one, obviously. And after doing all that, okay, that comes to how many shares? Shares would be right here, 200 shares, 200 shares, so that'd be 400 shares total. This one here, the risk was greater, but the price was lower, okay? Percentage risk, point risk was only one point. You do the math up here with one point, and this spreadsheet does it for you. That comes to 2,000 shares, so 1,000 at the IPT, and then 1,000 on the remainder. Okay, Harry says, ton of dry powder for a very long time that I feel I should have put to work a long time ago. Not sure how to stop it. Not sure how to stop the feeling or, well, you know, there's an old adage, you know, was it uptrends never let you in and downtrends never let you out or something like that. Just be patient and let the market come to you, you know? All right, Harry wants to take a look at some crypto. Let me just do a quick little, um, quick little, Take a look at crypto, then we'll take a look at your pairs. Okay, Bitcoin, my concern for Bitcoin for a while had been that it was below all this overhead supply, but we're we're now up here in clear air, okay? So this is a great thing, and I told people for a long time, 
The only time I'd be excited about buying Bitcoin based on the current chart, going way back to beginning of the year, or March at least, would be for it to be above 72,000. In other words, breaking out. So now it's breaking out. I'm beginning to get interested in Bitcoin. So the next pullback, I think, might be worthwhile to go after Bitcoin. Let's see. Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has woken up in here, but it's no Bitcoin, right? If we take a look at Ethereum to Bitcoin, you can see pretty serious downturn remains intact. Also, look at that 30 as I preach. Look at the Landry light. And it never did close, maybe one bar closed above it in a long, long time. So Ethereum versus Bitcoin, not so much. ZK had the normal break stop and you had a position, right? ZK had the normal break even stop. Well, uh, yes, yes. So on ZK, the we had, um, what was it? We just were looking at that. We had... So we had 400 shares of this one on, okay? So the entry was 23.50, okay? And the initial profit target right here, 28.50. So you can see 28.50, the trade comes off. You take off 200 shares, okay? And you make $1,000. So in white, these trade, this trade has been taken off. This part of the trade is still on, okay? You buy a full 400 or a full 2,000, whatever it calls for, going in so now the stop on zk yeah is getting pretty tight so it's that 2350 which would be break even we got fairly close to that today hopefully that answered that question okay so as i often say sometimes with the shit coins you could just sort them by the strongest and then look to get long the ones that are up the most now when they're all make sure they're all running and with Bitcoin being like the bellwether, it's it's good if Bitcoin's making some new highs too. See this here's one I took off. I didn't I didn't catch this one, but if you were paying attention earlier today or a couple of days ago, you might have seen that one take off. There's been a lot going on lately, obviously. Also, it's good. Don't buy anything again as I preach unless it's above the 30 EMA. Now that's another thing too. I was thinking about this morning is I have it been spending as much time with crypto because crypto cooled off for a while and now i need to as i often say you have to do your homework every day now in stocks i'm forced to do it because i have the trading service okay crypto pairs zec zec yeah that's uh looks like that's trying to break out to brand new highs multi yeah it's gonna have some overhead supply but that's that's a long time ago and cryptos crypto is slightly different than other markets i think people get wiped out quicker and you still have to pay attention to it don't get me wrong but yeah i i would maybe play this one if it kept rallying on a pullback and if if it were breaking out and it was one of the stronger ones i would think about that one so but yeah that definitely needs to be on your list yeah so it's kind of same as the other one uh and this one you can go back quite a ways before you have any problems so yeah, that one looks like it has potential, uh, but wait for it to, on a, the next nice breakout, it might be worth a shot there. Now remember, as I preach, I'm really not a breakout trader, except when it comes to occasionally in shit coins and something like uh, IPOs, where the buy at B is a bit of a breakout pattern. Okay, SUI, SUI, USD. Yeah, they're all looking kind of the same. So I'd say the same thing goes for that one too. Interesting. Yeah. So if they, they keep headed higher, uh, this one had a pretty deep pullback. That was kind of cool there. Okay. Uh, AE. Yeah, Harry, if, uh, next time, if you don't mind, just put them in one at a time and that way it'll be easy for me to track them. And then the other thing is uh, that way I'll know which ones I covered for you so I don't accidentally cover them not cover one or cover one twice whatever aero yeah interesting too it, it, it's interesting uh they all have the same pattern pretty much identical so yeah that's i think all three of those could be worth a shot i don't actually watch any one in particular what i do what i it, again i sort by the by the strength you know unless something's pulled back or like a setup like that and again i just go through these and, and look at the stronger ones yeah i still have a i still have half a position in zk Okay. 
All right, let's go ahead and shift gears and get into stocks. If you there's any stocks you want me to take a look at, start punching them in now. So at the end of the show, uh, we don't um, wait around and wait around and I make sure I get it in for you, okay? All right, let's take a look at the P's. S&P 500, bam, look at that. Pretty impressive that it tacked on another three quarters percent today. I was kind of stunned. I mean, geez, it's so overbought now. It's amazing that it's gone that far. Um, I don't know if, if I don't know what's pushing it. I don't know if there's a lot of shorts that are still covering. I mean, obviously people are buying it, but I guess that the, the point i'm trying to get to i don't know if there's a lot of shorts that are that are getting squeezed out shorts get a little um they tend to anticipate the market quite a bit in other words they, they get in early so on a squeeze out like this or whatever this is they tend to get squeezed which could push the market even further they also have an ego and and it's been said that markets will trend as long as people fight them so that it's it's a possibility and again, I'm thinking too much. Just draw your lines, draw your arrows, you know. But uh, thinking through it, shorts, because they have such an ego, they might even be shorting at these high levels, trying to play that correction. And as soon as they quit, it'll come. <laughs> NASDAQ, look at that. Up another percent and a half. All-time highs there. The Qs, we'll take a look at the daily. We looked at the weekly a second ago. A little bit more impressive on the daily. Look at that. Nice little breakout there in the Qs. Pretty happy about that. Again, I never thought that little stinking position would become a big deal. The Rusty, wow. Look at that. Look at that Rusty. It's huge. I feel like Tiny Elvis. Stalled out a little today. It's going back to being the typical old Rusty, but boy, what a breakout there. I would imagine there's a lot of people that are short this because the Rusty has been outperforming for so long. And I think it was, what, like 6% yesterday. So it could probably use a little bit of a breather, a lot of breather. But that's certainly a good thing. Gold and commodity got whacked on this whole deal. Uh, came back nicely today, though. So I would say gold and commodity still looks pretty darn good. Longer term, I'm a little bit more lenient when it comes to gaps in a commodity-related ETF like this, or commodities in general for that matter. And to some extent, commodity stocks too. But the gold miner shares just, they're not looking so hot. In fact, they're almost set up as a bow tie short. I am seeing one or two silver stocks out there look okay, but they all have mounds and mounds of overhead supply. So I just can't really get excited about that. Now software, here's hack. You can see break it out to all time highs. Software has been on an absolute tear. Look at that, up another 2.5% today. Very, very impressive. Biotech's been making the mother of all comebacks. Bit of a triple top here. It's plowed right into this overhead supply. So, so far, so good for biotech. I wouldn't buy it. At least it could break out and not look back for a while, but it's certainly improving. Broker-dealer, look at that. Had a bit of a pullback and then, bam, off to the races yesterday. Coming back in a little today, but it could use a break again. So it's been a very impressive run, obviously, as of late. Jets have been on fire. Uh, hard for me to get excited about airlines, but, uh, you know, believe in what you see and not in what you believe. I, I used to always joke the best thing to do with airlines is wait for them to rally and then short them. Banks w went straight up yesterday. They came in hard today, fairly hard. Well, 3%. That's an inside day. Look at that. An inside day, 3.25%. Banks are getting volatile. Look at the, look at the uh, HV on banks. Never thought I'd see that. 34. That's that's a that's a big number. I'm I'm geeking out here. I know, but I just I'm just noticing it. That's exciting. So the banks have gone crazy. They came back in a little today. I wouldn't I wouldn't count them down and out as long as the breakout holds. I think they're gonna be okay. Lithium's been all over the place, but it's trying to rally out of this deep pullback. So that's kind of interesting. There's a few stocks here and there that look pretty good in lithium. They all tend to have some issues, super volatile, penny stocks, and uh, lots and lots of overhead supply. Look at the mags, look at that. I never, I told my service peeps tonight, my premium clients, I said, you know, I, I usually the prior leaders don't become the new leaders. So mags, 
took off in this bull market, right? And now it's making a brand new leg higher. So that's that's awesome. Manufacturing broke out yesterday, coming in a little today, but still looks pretty good. Retail, same thing happening there. Now, a few areas, not so hot. Major drugs bounce a little today, but obviously downturn remains intact. You see the kind of a micro first thrust, and then you had a bow tie, and it's just been an ugly slide all the way down through that 200-day moving average. Let's take a look at cloud computing. Look at that, accelerating to brand new highs. Very impressive. Semiconductors beginning to wake up once again, okay? Maybe old leaders can become new leaders once again. We're right here at multi-week, almost multi-month highs, and not too far away from all-time highs. I wouldn't rush out and buy the semis yet, but the video was making new highs last week. I haven't checked it lately. I guess I could check it now. Yeah, so it's all-time highs for NVIDIA, so it's making the mother of all comebacks too. But I'd like to see some follow-through in the semis before getting too excited. Back to the downside, home builders look like they've topped out, at least for now, although just one or two big updates would get them out of this fluff that they're in. So they still look like a bow tie, but again, let's just see what happens one day at a time. I'm not really in a hurry to short anything, obviously with the market blasting a new highs, okay? Telecom, again, blasting the new highs. Financials got whacked pretty hard today, but they had the mother of all breakouts yesterday, so that's pretty impressive there. Real estate's been losing steam as of late, so that's one area I think I'd avoid. That could be topping out. Ditto for the utilities, but again, as I was telling my service peeps tonight, I am seeing some of these like micro-nuclear utility types, like the OKLOs, OK that are doing pretty good, but this is almost a bow tie to the downside. It's it's close to a bow tie, so that's a little bit of concern there. Health services, none of those areas, like major drugs, not doing so hot. Metals and mining actually broke out with vigor yesterday, even though gold was hit, so that found that kind of interesting. I guess it's all the other uh, ones carrying it. All right, any anybody uh, anybody on YouTube? Any stocks you want me to take a look at? In the meantime, Keith or Harry, let's take a look at MPL. Uh, MPL. I don't know if I have that one. Yeah, you have a, oh, it's crypto. Oh, we, we shipped MPL. Yeah, I think I'm actually long that one. Okay, we can shift back there real quick. Yes, you should put uh, put all your grandkids, all your kids, your mother-in-law, all their money, just put it into this crypto. Yeah, I would absolutely. Yeah, go all in. Go mortgage your house. <laughs> now, I, I bought this one earlier today. Uh, it was, I felt like I was really late, but I thought maybe I could squeeze off that 20% and I see where it kind of shot higher and came back in. And so, Probably if I'd have been watching this, I might have been tempted to take some partials on that. Um, I think it's too late now. It was probably too late when I got in, but it was moving at the time. And I thought it was worth a shot. So, um, yeah, I would pass on that one for now, uh, maybe on a pullback. Okay, any anything else you guys want me to take a look at? Once, going twice. Well, while we're in an impasse, I want to thank everybody for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything on the answer, David, Dave, Lander.com. Everybody, have a great weekend. All my Facebook peeps, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Everybody else, obviously, have a great weekend. Hope to see you all next week, and may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.